What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about some crypto exchanges and some crypto wallets. So we're going to go over the difference between the various crypto exchanges and what are best to use for Canadians and also the ones that I think are the best in terms of online storage wallets and the difference between cold wallet storage and online storage in terms of for your crypto wallet. So first off, there are is two different ways to store your crypto so there are exchanges which allow you to purchase crypto you can buy anything from Bitcoin to Ethereum Litecoin uh, Cardano any kind of crypto that you want to purchase some exchanges are only limited to Bitcoin and Ethereum for instance others like Coinbase allow you to trade a wide variety of cryptos from Cardano to Algorand to Ethereum to Bitcoin to Litecoin to Dash, Scale, you know, and dozens of others. So Coinbase is probably the number one in terms of trusted and in terms of versatility. They offer the widest selection of crypto. So going with them is probably a good idea, but there are higher fees when it comes to signing up and using the coinbase exchange so i'll go over those in a minute but first i'm going to discuss the difference between cold storage wallets and online storage wallets so coinbase being an online storage wallet it gives you the ability to both buy crypto and store crypto so it is both an exchange and a wallet in one coinbase along with BitBuy and Newton are both exchanges and wallets that allow you to buy crypto on their exchange and then store that same crypto on their secure wallet platform that is an online platform secured in their servers. Many of them are backed up by cold wallet storages or at least have most of the coin or crypto that they have in, in holding offline in offline storage so that it's not able to be accessed at any one time but there is still a difference between cold wallet storage and online storage in that there are other platforms that allow you to buy their services and store your crypto offline in a cold wallet so this is what companies like armory offer this is their service that they recommend from you know many of the different websites that go over crypto and tell you you know what are the best exchanges many of them recommend armory for being the best free bitcoin cold storage and this means that um as it says here your wallet is stored in a computer that is never connected to the internet this increases the level of security armory is limited to bitcoin storage only so if you're trading other cryptocurrencies it won't be your best option and this is the thing you got to realize is that if you want to trade different cryptos especially things that are not ethereum and bitcoin it is going to be harder for you to find wallets to store them with so you need to go with companies like coinbase that offer you both the wallet and the exchange to both buy crypto like cardano like algorand like dash scale and dozens of others or you need to find offline cold store wallets that, that allow you to store different types of crypto so obviously they go over coinbase here um, you know saying it's the most flexible and easy to use great option for beginners and i recommend it as well like i said though there is small fees um, and different uh, platform fees that you won't find on other exchanges another big downfall with coinbase is that when you buy crypto a lot of times It'll be trading, say, you know, Ethereum right now is trading at 2689, so it says on their platform. But when you go to purchase, you'll probably get a fill price at, say, 2750, or it'll be, it'll always be higher than the price that it's showing you. And that's because Coinbase is making profits from every time somebody buys their crypto, or at least their chart, they're giving you a price that's higher than the price that it's actually trading at. And this is not, you know, only on coinbase other platforms in exchanges have these same fees or these same kind of uh, higher limits the biggest problem with coinbase is that they don't allow you to put in limit orders so basically they only allow you to buy crypto at the price that they give you 
and this is a bit of a problem now obviously you can sit there and wait all day and wait for it to go down and then put in your order and, and it works that way but other exchanges like bitbuy for instance allows you to put in a limit order so say it's trading at 2689 right now right ethereum is trading at 2688 now and you wanted to buy it at say 2680 you could put in a limit order at 2680 and it might fill it if somebody is willing to buy it from you at that price so it, it allows you to put in a limit order to the market which will then allow you to a lot of times get filled at a better price so this is the difference between exchanges like bitbuy and coinbase one of the main terms of buying crypto and what they offer as exchanges but in terms of cold storage wallets cold storage wallets so let's go over the two that they recommend here on maple money which is treasure one and ledger nano so me myself i don't actually use cold storage wallets i know uh, a couple people that do they highly recommend them a friend of mine that i first um got introduced from crypto to who was up in kirkland lake he explained to me that cold store wallet is the way to go it gives you the most security it allows you to fully control your crypto and you then become kind of your own storage base so you have your own control and your own kind of security and if it's external it can't be hacked it can't be obviously it's offline so it's basically taken out of the grid you've you've disconnected it it's no longer you know accessible by the grid whereas when you have it stored with a exchange like coinbase or an exchange like bitbuy or newton they will be storing your crypto on their exchange which a lot of times they say is backed by offline storage but it still is you know obviously online for the most part or is accessible through online through their server so it's just that kind of extra added insecurity in which maybe they're hackable obviously they claim that it's 100 percent unhackable and that they store a lot of their crypto offline so that you don't have the risk of losing it even if they are hacked but these are things to be considered of if you're getting into the game and you really don't know much about how crypto works but essentially these offline cold wallets allow you to take your crypto buy it at an exchange like coinbase or like bitbuy or any other or dozens of other exchanges binance or whatever and then store it take it and store it in your offline wallet so you know these ones obviously are a little more expensive they're not free they charge you a price um so treasure one here it says treasure one is a more affordable but less but slightly less functional version of treasure's flagship cold wallet the model t for 69.99 you still get a highly secure wallet but it must be connected to an external device to work according to treasure you can easily back up the data on the one in case of loss of that or theft so this other one here the ledger nano it's the top line of cold wallet called the nano x and the nano s on the other hand is a more affordable alternative but the but unlike the x the nano s lacks the bluetooth connectivity so you will need a usb cable to connect to your device if you're new to bitcoin trading it offers reliable and secure storage that's well priced so these two are basically very similar and there's obviously these are the cheaper versions but there are better versions that you can get if you go to the website here they have multiple versions as you can see the model t and the treasure one so this is treasure um, they're basically cold wallet storage so you purchase your cold wallet from these um, companies and then they give you all of the uh, information to set it up to connect your offline cold wallet storage to your device to then transfer your crypto to that cold wallet storage and then take it offline and have it stored like an external hard drive and basically store it in you know a safe if you want or wherever you want in your person or in your in your home so that's uh treasure ledger nano is very similar and gives you the same options um it just like i said it's it's really just about what company you think is better they're both very similar they both have you know very very high recommendations as you can see this is a five star review from 3806 reviews right so these guys are trusted they are very very widely used and a lot of times you'll see like it's basically just a usb storage device right it's basically just a very very pimped out usb storage device that's what it is 
That's what they're offering you. So it's your choice, but this is obviously a more secure way to store your crypto. Like I said, I don't use it for myself, and I will give you the reason why I don't use it in a second. But what I want to conclude with here is that if you have a lot of crypto, if you're looking to get in the game and you want to have, you know, a lot of money, tens of thousands or even five to ten thousand dollars in the game, you know, and you want to get in and you want to have a secured because maybe the one thing that's stopping you from getting in is the fact that you're more concerned with, you know, is it secure? Is my money going to be secure? Am I going to be able to access my money when I want? Or is it going to be hard for me to get? Is it going to be, you know, locked in something where I have to fight for a year or two years to get out? You hear all kinds of horror stories about people losing access to their wallets or their storage or whatever. The thing you got to realize is that because of all of the problems that people have had like that in the past, these companies are trying to make it easier and more accessible for people, and especially people that are new. So these give you better options and are a lot more secure and accessible than they used to be. But with that said, if you're only looking to get in with a few thousand dollars or like a thousand bucks, like like for me, I'm not huge into crypto. I have my assets spread out over a wide base, but crypto is one place that I'm starting to get into. But you know, I only have a thousand getting up to like maybe a few thousand at most. So I'm okay leaving that on a storage like Coinbase, like Newton, like BitBuy. For me, like the risk of losing that to you know a company that is now looking to be traded, like Coinbase is going public, they are traded on the U.S. stock exchanges, which means they are a trusted company, and they are going to have to deal with the scrutiny of having issues like that. So me leaving a few thousand when they have billions of dollars being traded on their exchange is not really not a big deal because I'm not risking me losing that when it's insured and like i said they have a pretty solid secured offline storage as well where they keep like 60 to 70 percent of their uh, crypto offline so that it's not accessible at any one time by hacks if they do get hacked then they'll only be losing like you know 10 20 30 percent of their of their value of crypto if if and that's a big if right but that's that's kind of what you want to understand when you want to get looking at kind of the difference between online offline storage in terms of cold cold wallets or online storage via coinbase bitbuy and newton and now what i want to go over um and or an armory which is which is obviously a cold wallet offline storage so this is the the most recommended canadian cold wallet storage if you want um something that is a little more uh intuitive so this is more for people that are a little more experienced so armory is great for beginners as well but it is also good for people that are have experience and that understand how bitcoin works they give you all the tutorials they give you a full breakdown and explanation of how to use their software um and you know i i highly recommend armory if you are looking for a cold wallet storage but if you're looking to use online storage like i am then Obviously, Coinbase is one of the top ones, and I highly recommend Coinbase. But here's going to be the difference, and here's going to be the determining factor when you're looking at Coinbase, Bitbuy, Newton, and which ones to use. And one of the you know biggest things you should realize too is that you don't have to be limited to one. You could use all three of them, or you could use two, like I do. I use two, so I use Coinbase and Bitbuy, and I'm going to explain why. Coinbase is a great platform very easy to use very intuitive but like i said the the fees that they charge are a lot higher than other platforms and the fact that they do not give you the right the actual price so when you look to buy coin uh crypto from coinbase what's going to end up happening is you're going to go to fill you know you're going to say okay i want to buy 200 dollars worth of ethereum right now and it it's trading at 2689 but you're going to get a price of 27, you know, 27 uh or sorry, uh, 2672 or 20, you know, 267250, 2673, 2674. You're going to get a price something like that. It's going to be $5 higher or a few dollars higher um than what the price that's being shown. So that is a bit, you know, some people are like, "Well, I don't want to be buying higher than what it's showing me. I want to buy the price that it's showing me." But that's 
Coinbase always charges you a little extra, whether they're giving you the, the best price that they can get on the market or whether they're charging a little extra for you to buy their through their system, whatever it is, the price you're going to be given is always going to be higher than the price that's being shown. So that's one thing to be considered considerate of when you're thinking about going with Coinbase. BitBuy is quite different in the sense that, like I said, they allow you to put in limit orders. So they allow you to buy at the price that you want. So if it's trading at twenty six eighty nine, and you say, okay, but I only I only want to buy it at twenty six eighty nine, then you can put it a limit price at that twenty six eighty nine price. And if somebody wants to buy it from you at that price, then they can, and your order will get filled, right? So that's the big difference. Whereas Coinbase, there is no option to do that. Coinbase, you have one price, which is the price they give you. BitBuy allows you to put in limit orders and buy at the price you're comfortable with. Secondly, Coinbase only allows you to buy a certain amount. So they will limit you to 150 on your first order. So the first time you put money into Coinbase, it will limit you to $150. And they will limit you to only using a credit card or a debit card and you cannot use an actual bank transfer at least for Canadians. I think it's different for people in the US but for Canadians you can't do a bank transfer you can only do uh, basically buying with your credit or debit card and you can only do 150 limit at first and then after it'll go up to 300 and then it'll go to 375 and then I think it'll keep going up exponentially but just understand that the first couple times you're gonna buy crypto on Coinbase you're going to end up only being able to buy $150 worth and then $300 worth, which is going to kind of limit the amount of exposure you have. And that's a weekly limit. So it's a week, you can buy 150 and then a week later, you know, every day you'll gain like 20 bucks back, 20 bucks back until you have over 150 again. And then, you know, after that, it'll go up to 300. So then you can keep buying. But your first couple of weeks, you're only going to ha- be able to buy 150 to 300, you know, to $450 worth of crypto, depending on, you know, in that first couple weeks when you buy and how quick your limit goes up. I know with my cousin, his limit went up a lot higher than mine did. So whether that's based on your credit limit or whatever, I don't know how that works, but, or maybe it's just the fact that, um, he, his credit card has a higher limit or the fact that I was buying with a debit card and he was buying with a credit card. I I don't know the difference, but Either way, just understand there will be a limit to how much you can buy. Um, and it is quite small, like 150 or 300, right? So if you're looking to get in with like a couple thousand right off the bat, then Coinbase might not be your best bet, right? But BitBuy, on the other hand, and this is why I recommend BitBuy for this exact reason, is because they give you the ability to use bank transfers. And this is, you know, down here, as you see, you can obviously use Interact, but you can obviously also use a bank transfer. And this is the big thing because with a bank transfer, you can put in 800, 1,000, 1,500, and you're not going to have to worry about getting limited to only putting in 150 or 300 on your first transaction, right? So this is what you need to consider when you're thinking about going with BitBuy or Coinbase or even with Newton, which I'll go over in a second. Now... In terms of my recommendations, like I said, for an exchange and for a storage and for an overall platform, I think BitBuy is the number one and I would highly recommend it, especially if you're looking to get in with bigger size. But understand, you only have access to these seven cryptos, right? So if you're not looking to trade Ripple, um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, Stellar, Litecoin, if you're not looking to trade any of those and you want to trade the cheaper cryptos, they're not available on Coinbase or on uh, BitBoy, BitBuy, and you're going to want to go over and use Coinbase. So that's where you're going to find access to all the other cryptos that you'll find, you know, from New Cypher to, you know, Cardano to Zcash to every other type of crypto available, Algorand, you know, Coinbase probably has the one of the widest selections of coins that you can purchase. So that's why Coinbase is a good, uh, probably the best in terms of versatility, but second best in terms of the exchange in itself and the ability to actually purchase crypto. I give BitBuy my number one, and it's definitely better in terms of the platform, the ability to use limit orders, and the ability to use bank transfers. 
BitBuy gives you more versatility in terms of how much money you can use and it gives you the ability to buy at the price you want to buy. But like I said, Coinbase gives you the wide selection of coins and that's the biggest thing with Coinbase and why it is probably the biggest exchange, right? Because of the fact that it allows you to trade every type of crypto, which is bringing a lot more people to Coinbase. Whereas the people that are only looking to trade Ethereum and Bitcoin and Litecash and, and Litecoin and stuff like that are limited to, you know, those on BitBuy. But like I said, you're also able to trade those with bigger size. So if you're just like, hey, I just want to buy, you know, a bunch of Bitcoin and that's it, then BitBuy is your answer, right? And Newton is probably is the last one on the list. So this is my third um, recommendation. And the only reason I'm not as big on this one is because I've had a ton of problems trying to get signed up with them. And I've heard the same problems from a few other people that I've talked to. So with Newton, um, they, for some reason, just don't have good customer service and don't have a good setup. So when you're trying to get on their system, you have to go through various different verification processes. And I did everything they asked. And everything I did was what they asked me to do. And I still couldn't get verified. And like I said, I, I got verified on Coinbase and BitBuy within probably like Coinbase, it took a little long or no. I think BitBuy, it took like 24 hours. But but with Coinbase, it was basically instantaneous. And same with my cousin. My cousin was able to buy um, on Coinbase within an hour of him signing up. So that's also another another big thing, right? <clears throat> Newton is a very good storage. Um, there's a lot of good things about them, but like I said, it, it's 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 just such a problem to get verified. If you can get verified with them and you want to give it a shot, I recommend it because they are a really good platform. My my friend um, that got one of the other um, so I have two big friends that got me into crypto. One was in Kirkland Lake, another one was someone that I work with. Um, close to here in Brantford so he was somebody that kept telling me about crypto and he's been trading crypto for a long time he's been buying like Chainlink and um, Ethereum and Bitcoin for quite a while now and a few other smaller coins like Decentraland but he's been kind of trying to get me into crypto for a while and eventually I kind of was like you know what I waited for a dip and then I got in and I've been kind of riding the wave up ever since but now I'm starting to look at other coins as well, which is why I like Coinbase for that sense. But Newton is a great alternative to BitBuy or a great um, one to have, you know, with as well. Because the thing about all of these different cryptos or exchanges, is it's, 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 it's what's up to you, right? And like you see with Newton, they have the lowest fees. So in terms of all of these different exchanges, Newton is the cheapest and one of the most recommended for having good storage so they give you a really good um, kind of product for a ch for free basically so that's the good thing about Newton is that if you can get verified um, and it like and this is what it bugs me here is it says instant verification and I'm telling you guys like I I emailed them three different times I've been you know going back and forth with them for weeks for a month over, I, I just got fed up. I just was like, you know what? I, I already am using BitBuy and I'm using Coinbase, so I'm just going to go with those because I got tired of dealing with Newton um, for their sign-up procedure. So they say instant verification. I say that that's a lie and that their customer service is not the greatest, but they do have competitive spreads like they say, and they do have very low trading fees, which gives you confidence that at least if you are able to get verified and able to set up your you know wallet and everything then you will have a very cheap and a very competitive platform that gives you very good prices and you know for a very cheap to no cost so yeah so that's the that's the big thing um about them i don't know about their um I don't know what they how they do if they allow bank transfers but I'm not sure hmm but you'll see there are a ton of good reviews it is one of the most highly recommended um, like I said my but my friend uses them he likes them quite a bit um, for me it was just 
it was just one of those that I, I, I just couldn't get through their registration and verification process. And that, you know, uh, it's, it's a shame because it might be a really good platform. I really don't know. And I'm not sure if you can use uh, bank transfers. I think you can because I'm pretty sure my friend says he uses um, bank transfers. So, oh, here we go. Oh, it's just okay. Never mind. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it, you know, doesn't say exactly how you, if you can use bank transfers or not, but I'm I'm almost 100% you can. So let's just say Bitbuy and Newton, you can use bank transfers, whereas on Coinbase you're limited to credit cards and debit cards. And like I said, um, this gives you the ability to put more money in. So if you're looking to get in with you know two three thousand dollars right off the bat. You're gonna have to get in with Bitbuy or with Newton, and you only be able to buy Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Stellar, Ripple. Those coins you're not gonna be able to buy. The really cheap coins like Cardano or Polygon or Decentraland or any of the <clears throat> different Ethereum tokens, you're probably only gonna be able to trade the top top cryptos, which is fine as well, right? Like just getting exposure, especially when you're just starting out, you might. You might want to just stick to the big names because those are going to be the biggest movers and those are going to be the most stable, right? Some of these other tokens are, are not as stable and they're very, very volatile, right? So that's basically it um, in this video. Um, I kind of just wanted to break down which of the different exchanges I think is best for Canadian traders. Like I said, I recommend Bitbuy as my number one, but if you're looking to trade different types of crypto then coinbase is probably going to be your best option and newton is a very close second to bitbuy it's it's really good platform like i said if you can get through the verification process then hopefully you have better luck than i did but anyway this is the thing about bitcoin though or uh, coinbase is that you go down and you see all of these different you can buy almost all of these right it's just such a better platform and, and i like cardano myself what I've been looking at for the past little bit, waiting to get a nice buy. I think 150 is a good area. If it keeps consolidating, um, it might be just best to buy it at 150. It's been holding this level for a long time, so we'll see. But either way, I think uh, you're going to have a base down towards 120, 125. That's acting as a really solid base and highs of 180, $2. So anywhere between this range of 125 to $2 is, is probably the best to trade Cardano. So that's just a little tidbit I'm throwing in the end of this video is a little recommendation um, that I think Cardano is probably going to be one of the biggest assets to uh, crypto assets for the next few months. So we're going to see what happens, but I really like Cardano and I like the fact that it's not entirely dependent on Bitcoin or Ethereum. It is an independent crypto, so this gives it its own kind of platform and its own blockchain so this gives it independence and it gives it its own stability which is a really nice thing to see and a really nice thing to realize that a lot of these are speculative so you need to be careful and you need to be aware of what a speculative play is it's something that is trading at these levels because of valuations not because of what it actually is worth so that's what you need to realize a lot of times and these a lot of these coins have gone from you know a dollar or sorry, from like three cents, four cents, five cents, all the way up to two dollars, right? So these are huge moves, and these are within the last year, right? And as you see, we had a run up back in 2017, and then we had a crash, right? So this could be the the same thing we're seeing here. This is why we want to be aware. You don't want to just go jump, put all your money into these speculative coins like Cardano or like Algorand or like scale or or you know the millions of other store storage which is s2rg which is another new one they just brought on all of these are different coins that give you different you know prices different support and resistance you need to kind of start being aware of these things before you start putting a lot of your money into them if you want to throw a little bit in and just try it out go for it but if you want to start putting in big size you need to be aware of how these things trade and you need to be aware of support and resistance like i said you can clearly see on this chart here, 
that we have some clear support in the 125s and some clear resistance upwards of the 185s. Right now we have some resistance at the 165. So right now we're trading between 150 and 165, but if we can break out above 165, we might have a move back to 185, right? And that's a pretty decent move. And then I'd look to sell if you're in this thing. Selling at 185 is probably the best. And looking to buy down towards 125 and even at 150 if you want to get in maybe with a quarter size at 150 or half 150. And then if it falls down, you buy the rest, right? But these things can also crash. And that's why we want to be aware. Like within this two weeks, this thing lost almost half of its value, right? Within a week, lost half of its value. And this is what we want to be aware of is we're not just jumping into these speculative coins, which is why sometimes it is best just to go with BitBuy or, or Newton and just buy Bitcoin, just buy Ethereum, and just see how it works and, and kind of watch some of these other coins and learn from them. But don't look to jump in with full size, not understanding the risk, right? Obviously, if you understand the risk and you have full confidence that some of these co coins are going to go to the moon, then go for it, right? But like I said, with Coinbase, they only allow you to buy 150 at first and then 300. So you're still going to be limited to only a few hundred every week, right? So this is going to restrict the amount of money you can put in right off the bat. So that's something you want to be aware of if you're like, hey, I want to get in, jump in with a few thousand. It's like, okay, well, you're not going to be able to do that on Coinbase. And because a lot of these other exchanges don't allow you to trade these cheaper coins, you're very limited to what you can trade especially if you're looking to jump in with big size. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. And let me know if you guys have any other suggestions or other, any other crypto wallets and exchanges that you guys enjoy or you guys like. But for me, I think Bit, BitBuy and Coinbase are the two best for Canadians. And uh, I think that Newton is very close second if they can just have a better customer support and verification process that actually works. I think they're good. Like I said, they're definitely the cheapest and probably one of the more secure. But in the end, they're all pretty much the same when you're talking about online wallets. So obviously the cold storage wallet is going to be 100% the best, but it's also a little more pricey and a little more technically challenging. So that's that. Thanks, guys. Have a good day and feel free to like and subscribe and let me know what you guys think.